Hi guys! Salamat sa inyong patuloy na ginagawang pagsubaybay dito sa ating discussions about mechanics of deformable bodies. At ang magiging topic natin ngayon ay isang, isang, isang sample problem about stresses in beams. At sa problem na ito, ipakikita ko guys kung paano gamitin ang flexure formula in solving for the stresses. Guys, ito ang problem. A section used in aircraft is constructed of tubes connected by thin webs as shown in the figure. So here is the figure. Its tube has a cross-sectional area of 0.2 inches square. If the average stress in the tube is not to exceed 10 KSI, determine the total uniformly distributed load that can be supported on a simple span 12 feet long. Neglect the effect of the web. So guys, in the problem, we have here a section of a, an aircraft or a part of an aircraft that uses tubes and the tubes are connected with webs. These uh, okay, connectors are called webs. And this uh, section is used to support a uniformly distributed load that is given to be 12 feet long. Now, if okay, the maximum stresses on each of these uh, tubings is uh, 10 KSI, considering that each of the tube has a total area of 0 .0 0.2 inches square, we are required to find for the uniformly distributed load that this a section can carry. So let us try to show here, okay, guys, the uh, beam, ano? okay, this, the beam. So this section is used okay, to support a load of W expressed in terms of pound per linear foot on a 12K foot span. It is simply supported, hence, okay, there will only be vertical reactions at the support. And assuming that each of the supports are okay, labeled as A and B. So, guys, before we can solve for the problem, the first thing that we do is to make an analysis of uh, the cross section, considering that in the flexure formula, we shall be needing some property of the section such as okay, the location of the fiber or the farthest fiber from the neutral axis as well as the moments of inertia of the section with respect to the neutral axis. And therefore, it is uh, but necessary to consider analyzing first the section of the beam used to support a weight of W on a 12 feet simple span. So let us imagine that okay, we consider the beam as uh, this beam as the cross section, and our goal is to consider to find for the moments of inertia of this section about okay, the neutral axis. Now the question is where is the neutral axis? Considering that the tubings are placed symmetrical with respect to one another, therefore we would expect that somewhere here will be the location of the neutral axis. And so we shall be using that as our neutral axis. And we would expect therefore that okay, the location of the farthest fiber from the neutral axis shall be okay, the location of this tube or the location of this tube, considering that their distances from the neutral axis is one half of okay, the distance 12 or simply the radius of the circle. And therefore, our next uh, concern is to find what will be the moments of inertia of this section with respect to the neutral axis. Considering that the section is not regular in shape, it is composed of tubings 
that are placed at a certain distance from a certain reference axis called the neutral axis. And so, maybe it is good to consider recalling our concept of the moments of inertia. And so, I'll, I'll uh, okay, give you a recall or review of uh, the concept, some concepts about the moments of inertia. So, let us imagine that we have a, a differential area or an area having a, an area equal to A. And this area has uh, okay, the centroid given at G. And this area has uh, uh, the moments of inertia about the centroid, or we call it as the centroidal moment of inertia, called as I sub G, where G may refer to as the centroid. Meaning, this uh, moment of inertia is referred from the centroid of that area. Now, suppose that we wanted to consider finding for the moments of inertia of this area about an axis not coinciding with the centroid of that area. Maybe an axis somewhere here. Okay, let us imagine that this is our axis and let us call that our axis is the reference axis. And we wanted to consider finding what will be the moments of inertia of this area about this reference axis not coinciding with the centroid of that area. And so to, to, to be able to compute for the moments of inertia of this area, okay, then we shall be using the transfer formula of the moments of inertia. Now, if the area or the centroid of that area okay, is at distance d from the reference axis, therefore, okay, the moments of inertia of this area about this reference axis can be computed using the transfer formula such that the moments of inertia about that reference axis is equal to the moments of inertia of this area with respect to its centroid plus the certain product equal to the product of this area and the square of this distance so that it will be equal to i sub g plus the product of a multiplied by d square where d is equal to the distance of the centroid of the area from the reference axis. Now, if we're going to look at our illustration, considering that the area is so small that this is just equal to 0.2 of an inch, and if this will be compared to, okay, to the distance of this area from the neutral axis, which is 12, therefore we can say that okay, the area is small compared to the distance of this okay, area from the neutral axis. And so, if the dimension of the area is so small compared to the distance of the area from the reference axis, where the moments of inertia shall be taken, then the centroidal moments of inertia will be relatively small compared to the moments of inertia with respect to the reference axis. Hence, may be considered negligible. So what do we mean by that? It means that if this area is so small, that if this area is very, very small, that the centroidal moments of inertia of this is small compared to the total moments of inertia when this will be transferred from this centroid to the neutral axis. Therefore, the centroidal moments of inertia can be neglected in the computation for the total moments of inertia. So that, if we may say that the moments of inertia, therefore, of uh, a, this area will just be simply equal to the summation of A multiplied by the square of the distance from the centroid to the reference axis. So in this particular example, you would notice that this I sub G will just be neglected because I sub G will be considered to be very, very small if this distance is comparatively larger than the dimension of that area. Now, using this formula, we can compute for the moments of inertia of this section with respect to the neutral axis, considering that these are made of okay, six tubes. 
and two of them have equal distances from the neutral axis. The distance of these two red, colored red, are both equal to 6. Now, if we will be neglecting the centroidal moments of inertia of this, then the moment of inertia of the, the entire section will be equal to twice the sum of AD squared. The area is equal to 0.2 and this, the distance is equal to 6 inch square. And therefore, it will be 2 times 0.2 times 6 square. Plus, there are other 4K areas and whose distances are equal to this distance from this point up to that point. And this will be equal to the radius multiplied by sine of theta, which is equal to 6 multiplied by sine of 30. And so when this will be simplified, how much will be our moments of inertia? The moments of inertia of the entire section, therefore, will be equal to 21.6 inch to the fourth. Now, after we have computed for the moments of inertia of this section, then we may be now ready to compute the other element in order for us to be able to use the flexure formula. And this time, we shall be computing for a, the maximum moment which may be expressed in terms of the uniformly dis distributed load. So we shall be now computing for the maximum moment that will be induced by this W on the beam when the beam is simply supported over a span of 12 feet. Now, knowing that okay, the beam is symmetrically loaded and symmetrically supported, we would expect therefore that this beam would have equal reaction and the magnitude of the reaction shall be equal to one half of the total weight, whose total weight will be equal to the product of the uniformly distributed load multiplied by the length of the beam, which is equal to 12. And so if this will be substituted with a value, we would expect, therefore, that the reaction at A will be equal to the reaction at B, and that is equal to 6W. And therefore, we shall have here our RA, which is equal to 6W, and so our RB will also be equal to 6W. Now, after we have computed for the reaction, we will now, we are now ready to compute for or to draw for the shear and moment diagram. Now, if we're going to show, show the moment the shear and moment diagram, therefore, we try to draw it by using our relationship, okay, with this as our shear diagram, having this as our controlling points. Okay, we have here point A and we have at point B. We expect that at point A, okay, the shear starts at zero. Then after A, we add okay, the concentrated load which is directed upward. Therefore, the magnitude of the shear to the right of A will also be equal to 6W. Now from 6W, if you will be subtracting this total weight, which is equal to 12W, therefore the resulting shear at the left of B will be negative K6W. And the two can be, can be connected by a straight line because this is horizontal. The next, the shear diagram will be expected to have K a degree equal to 1 and therefore you have here a straight line. And then finally, we can compute for the shear at B as the shear at B will be equal to 6 minus this a concentrated load at B, which is equal to 6 also. Therefore, this will be 0. And we would expect that okay, the, the shear will, will intersect the x-axis at C at uh, uh, a distance equal to L over 2 from A or L over 2 from B, which is equal to 6 feet and 6 feet from B. And from here, we can compute now for our moment diagram, where the moment diagram A will uh, be computed with our A points A, points B, and point C. We start with our moment at A. Then from A, we add this area of the shear diagram, which is equal to 1 half of 6 multiplied by 6, and this is equal to 18. And so you have here our 18, and then from here, we have also 0. And okay, the curve will now be concave in the downward direction as indicated by the zero slope at this point C. So from here, we would expect that therefore that this okay, uh, 
magnitude will be our maximum moment which has a magnitude equal to 18W. With maximum moment equal to 18W, with C equal to 6, and with the computed moments of inertia which is equal to 21.6, we can now substitute that in the flexure formula we have, which is equal to MC over I. Where in this formula, we are given that the stress, which is the allowable, equal to 10,000 pound per square inch. Our maximum moment is given at 18W. Our C is given to be at 6 inches. And our I is computed at 21.6 inch to the fourth. When all of this shall be substituted in this formula for stress, therefore our stress will be equal to our uh, equation will be equal to 10,000 multiplied by 18W multiplied by 6 divided by 21.6 and we shall be able to solve W equal to 2,000 pound per inch or equivalent to some, something about 166.67 pounds per linear foot. And so guys, uh, that is the solution to the problem that I have presented to you and I hope that you are able to follow the solution and with this uh, presentation you have you are able to understand the application of the flexure formula in dealing with beams. Once again thank you very much for watching.